Hey everyone, it's Neve here and welcome to my art journaling channel. Today I thought I'd take you through my 10 favourite products that I use for art journaling. The ones that sit closest to me when I'm art journaling um, and the ones I use quite regularly. So they're probably, if you've followed this channel for a while, things you've seen me use lots and lots and lots. Um, I'm no way or means sponsored by anyone to do this. This is just the stuff that I love. So um, without further ado, let's jump in. So the first, first thing that I love that I talk about all the time is this tiny little sad little thing here which is my Stabilo oil pencil. It's an amazing piece of kit. It works really, really well. It's, oops, sorry, I wasn't very organized. I'm gonna get a piece of paper. Um, draws with a really nice line. If you get it wet, because it's water reactive, you suddenly get this really inky black line. Um, the thing I love about it is that you can do all sorts with it. If you spray it with water, you can get it to drip down your page. I'm going to do this off the screen so I don't wreck my paper. So you see it sort of bleeds, bleeds out and does all sorts of weird and wonderful things. So it's a great all-purpose pencil that I use for sketching stuff out because I can wash away the lines if I don't like what I've done. Um, if I'm doing it with paint, I can blend it into the wet paint and I get sort of an instant shadow. Um, it's just a really, really cool little pencil. So, um, I don't know if you can see it on screen. Stabilo All Pencil, water reactive. It's amazing. It does come in different colours as well. I've got the blue, blue and a red and a white. Um, I think it comes in greens and yellows and stuff as well. They're fantastic. And just as a little add-on to that, which I've only just come across, um, by the same company, these are the Stabilo Woody Pencils. Now they're actually designed for kids. They're three-in-one pencils. They're really thick and chunky. They go over everything. Um, you can actually write in plastic and glass with these. Um, they're amazing, so fabulous for mixed media. So um, if you come across these, they're a great thing to have in your kit as well. My second must-have thing is my Posca paint pens, my lovely paint pens. I've got the whole colour range. I've just selected out a few because you don't need to see them all. I have them in two sizes. This is the PC1M, which is the fine. Um, so you can see it's a bullet tip and it's fine. I prefer this over the pin tip ones because it doesn't get as blocked as easily. So um, this one's a really a great one for doing your fine writing and so on. This one I use most often for my mic making, which is the PC5M. Again, it's bullet tipped, um, but you can get quite fine lines with it. So, sorry, I am just noticed I'm not even on screen. Apologise for that. Um, yes, so you can see you can get quite fine lines with it but um, it's a really handy, and as I said, it comes in many, 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 many different colours. Um, but the bonus of having paint markers is the fact that um, it's acrylic paint, so it dries like acrylic paint, it's permanent, it goes over the top of most everything, um, dries really quickly, um, and you've just got these beautiful, vibrant colours that you can use. I tend to use them a lot when I'm doing fine detail work because I don't need to get a um, paintbrush in and so on. So it's really convenient just to grab out my paint pens and use those instead. So next on my list are neon paints. Um, I would never have thought a few years ago that I would be a neon paint person. But I just love how they go on a page and just brighten everything up and just give this huge pop of colour. These are the Amsterdam uh, acrylics, which are neons. Any neon paint will work. You will find they're um, not as creamy, they're more translucent. So I use them as a glaze over the top. They're great for putting over the top of collage pieces because you don't lose out in the collage, you just get this beautiful colour. Um, and they're just really, really handy. I particularly love the yellow and the, the pink, but the other two colours come in really, really handy as well. Um, originally I had the Derivan ones, which is an Australian company, um, which I bought from Spotlight, 
they work perfectly but I came across these ones and they, they're just fabulous so um, if you're looking for them it's reflex gold reflex green reflex reflex yellow and reflex orange so the reflex ones are the, the neon colors um, next on the list is gesso 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 um, so um, I'm not very particular about the gesso I have I have to admit this stuff's not brilliant it's very plasticky so the more you pay for gesso the better quality you're going to get but basically it's just a primer for your paper to seal it um, if I get stuck if I can't find my jar which is silly because it's so big but quite often it's buried under something I actually just grab this titanium white from um, Amsterdam paints again or the white Dina Wakeley paint and use that as gesso but obviously it's a bit more economic to buy a big jug of gesso than to use this however this is really really opaque um, and it'll cover everything so it's it's a brilliant stand-in black gesso I tend to use a Dina Wakeley gesso it's beautiful matte finish it goes over everything it's great for doing sort of redacted paintings and coloring over collage again though um, if I get stuck or I want something that's not really really black um, this Payne's Grey is amazing um, and I'm using this a lot more when I'm stenciling if I'm stenciling with black I tend to use my black gesso um, but if I don't want anything as black I use a Payne's Grey so next on my list is watercolor paints I don't use them very often and I do tend to use them as sort of a finishing off over collage or if I want something else so I'm not a watercolor painter by any stretch of the imagination it's just something to add some extra color um, if I don't want to get my acrylics out and I want it to be more translucent I tend to use the Jane Davenport bright set just because I really love bright colors so I really like this set and the colors in it um, I also love these are handmade watercolors from Rachel Beth designs um, on Instagram if you ever get an opportunity to get some of her paints and you you love watercolors they are amazing this set which again I never thought I'd actually use is the one I probably use most often um, with the um, neon colors this is a more like a gouache paint it's a little bit more opaque than usual watercolors but you can see they've just got the most gorgeous shimmers uh, where is it? I'm just trying to find it. This is the first set I got and I got it watching James Luke Burke Creative and I really got it for this colour, the Copper Candle and it's just magic. So that's this one. It's looking a little bit um, empty compared to the rest of them. So um, yeah, so they're amazing. I've just used, repurposed a Jane Davenport tin to put them all in because they come in their own cute little tins but I just wanted them all together. So that's my watercolours. Uh, next... I was going to leave this to last but I'll, I'll get into it now because <laughs> those of you who follow my channel know this about me um, the, I could not separate this out in any way shape or form I just love everything that Dina Wakely touches so her acrylic paints are the ones I tend to use the most I've picked out my three favorite colors but I, I've got all the range um, unfortunately they're um, discontinuing the large bottles, the two ounce bottles, and going with this little tube. Now, to be perfectly honest, this goes an awful long way. Um, I've, you know, finished one or two of them, but still a lot of them have got a lot of paint in them. So um, they are very deceiving. You do get a lot of paint for your money. Um, but if you do come across these and you found a colour you like, I would highly recommend you try and get these ones. So her paint is amazing. It is a matte finish, um, but they're beautifully bright gorgeous colors next is her stencils and again um, before I sort of started into this these are sort of stencils I would never have looked at or thought about as being useful they're just odd geometric shapes and you just think mm, well, what would you use them for but they're the ones I go to most often because they've got beautiful patterns and I suppose a lot of my work I like to have the patterns in the background not um, focal images I want to have that texture and, and pat pattern in the background so you can see that they are well well loved and um, they're fabulous for using on your gel prints and stuff and doing in your backgrounds and um, so her stencils her stamps 
again I started off in this game stamping 30 years ago now um, and I've these are the stamps I go to most I've got them sitting up next to me because they've got the beautiful graphic images I can use in the background the gorgeous text because I love using text she's got these beautiful um, drawn line shapes and fantastic words that sort of fit along with the art journaling and the, the mic making stamps so the things that I use really regularly I can um, put paint on these I put ink on these they just go over everything so it just fits in with my style um, and I really enjoy using these the other thing that I really enjoy using this is the new brand new collage papers but I the collage tissues that she's released and the collage words and I use them a lot I found with art journaling that having something like this that I can make almost translucent and make it disappear into the background works really well because it blends everything together and makes it look seamless so I use these a lot these ones come with um, images in black and in white so you get all those designs on the back um, in black and in white that you can use and tint and the same with the the words these ones are slightly snarky which I quite like um, but she's got beautiful other sayings that you can use as well the last thing is her journals are amazing they're some of my favorite to use um, the reason I like this one is because it's a bit of a challenge to use um, it actually comes with four different substrates in it so you get this watercolor paper now while it's watercolor paper it's not actually watercolor paper I would watercolor on it's great for doing mixed media and acrylics on it's not brilliant for watercolor unless you prime it first you get canvas and just be aware that the canvas just try and find canvas the canvas does shrink when you paint on it I don't mind that I know that really bugs some people that they don't have the nice um, page but you just need to be aware it will shrink um, you get the burlap which I had all these ideas when I first got this journal that I was going to sort of sew into it and stuff which is stupid because I don't actually sew um, I think I've sewn or tried to embroider on one page and just gave up but it is lots of fun to use I don't tend to use it like this I know a lot of people sort of staple onto this and make beautiful collages on it I actually tend to cover the burlap with some tissue paper you can sort of see the tissue paper down here which fills in the holes um, so I can paint over it without it seeping through to the other side but I still retain the texture so it gives me more a more textured page like the canvas the final substrate that's in here is the craft paper the craft cardboard which you can use as well so it's a, a fun size and the thing I also love about it is a perfect size for me this is my perfect size journal it's not too big and it's not too small um, the last thing oh, she has released these little journals too which I'm addicted to I think I've finished four of them and I've just started my my fifth one so I started this one yet not yet I should just put paint in it for some reason um, yes so it's just perfect little size this paper is a lot thicker um, I don't know if you can see that so it is actually really really good for doing watercolors um, okay I don't know if I've got just a watercolor page in here or this one so it actually takes the watercolor really well um, so if you want to watercolor I would suggest getting this smaller journal uh, the other thing that she's released apart from her washi tape and stuff is this collage collective which is all of her artworks that you can cut out and use in your own artwork which I love so um, that's been really handy so yes it's definitely not sponsored but huge Dina Wakely fan own pretty much everything that she's produced and love it dearly I'll grab all this stuff out of the way Okay, next thing is inks. Lots and lots and lots of inks. So obviously if you're doing stamping or mic making, you want to have some way of putting that onto the page. Um, I use for most of my black ink stamping, the Versafine. I find it's really great. It's an oil-based ink, it's a permanent ink, so it goes over everything and it dries and it dries permanent. Um, the archival inks 
uh, just like that as well, um, except they come in lots of colours. The first fine comes in lots of colours too. I just actually really like having the small inks because I don't, I'm doing mic making stamps most of the time these uh, now, so I don't need to cover huge big areas, it's just little bits. So I find that these are really handy having the small ones. Um, the other inks I use a lot are the Distress inks. This is just one of the four tins I've got of them. I've got most of them. Um, I just sort them out into colours. So again, these are water reactive inks, so you do need to be careful about how you use them. But they're great for doing watercolour -y backgrounds or adding colour over the top of stuff. If you stamp them on the final layer or something, that's fine. But if you're going to glue over the top, it's best to use um, a permanent ink. The Distress Oxides are a pigment. They're, uh, a hybrid pigment dye ink. I have a love-hate relationship with them. I love the colours. I love how they go on opaque, but it really bugs me the chalky finish you get at the end, which I know is the point of them. Um, but I sort of stamp it on and get this beautiful lime green, a beautiful orange, and then I go back the next day and it's just sort of a white colour. Um, so that, that bugs me. But um, they are great to use in different circumstances, so they're really useful as well. So that's inks. Now that obviously includes things like spray inks as well. Occasionally I use spray inks in my work. Um, or these ones. These ones are um, the incredible inks from James Davenport. These ones are slightly more permanent than these ones. These are very water reactive so you just need to be aware of that. Um, which is why I don't use them very often in my artwork. The other sort of ink I use is um, inks like these. These are acrylic inks. When these dry, these are permanent. So if you want something that's permanent, go for an acrylic ink. I also, when I'm doing splattering, use my um, acrylic white and um, a black pick, um, artist ink. Um, and they are fantastic. Um, and go over everything and again. When they're dry, they're permanent. Right, next thing, couldn't live without it, gel medium. Um, again, it comes in all different ranges. I use all sorts of different. This just happens to be the Dina Wakely one because that's what I was able to get at the shop the last time I was there. I do like to get matte medium um, because usually when you're working over it, you don't want that glossy surface that sort of stands out. However, I have used gloss gel medium before. It works exactly the same. Um, you just have a gloss finish. So if I'm using a gloss gel medium, I tend to put a thin coat of it over my entire page at the end, so everything's got a gloss finish. Uh, so I just use this as a glue, basically. Put it underneath what I'm working on and then put it over the top to seal it. If you want to glue down that's something that's slightly thicker, so you can see that's kind of runny. It's not runny at all, but it, it looks very soft. Whereas this one is the ultra gel thick medium and you can see here it holds its form a lot more. So this one's nearly finished. Um, this is really good for gluing down 3D items or something that's heavier. So if I was gluing down metal embellishments I would use my ultra thick. If I'm just gluing down papers and, and tissues and so on I use my, my soft gel medium. And again most art ranges have their different gel mediums. So I know um, the Crafters Workshop has them, um, um, oh, all of them do, um, Golden has a whole range of them and sometimes you can actually get them with other things added into them like glass beads and so on to get different effects so just, just make sure when you're looking at them if you're using it for glue that you just want soft gel you don't want anything added into it. Okay the last thing out of my ten is with me yeah collage anything can be collage anything at all bits from magazines bits from books old gel prints bits from magazines atlases old lined paper old um, calendars prints that didn't work. This is off a workshop that I printed some stuff out and it didn't work. Vintage books. Anything you can possibly think of you can use as collage fodder. Um, 
these are printables that you can get from some different people. Um, I, when I've got printables, I print it out into sticker paper, so I just cut it out once and stick it down. So I use collage an awful lot in whatever I do. Um, it gives you really nice backgrounds. It can add interest. It can add texture. Um, it can add a focal point sometimes if you're using a magazine image over the top of something. It can add a focal point. So it's just a really, really handy thing to have. So obviously I've um, stenciled on top of some vintage um, book paper there. I've used magazine cutouts to collage onto here and this is a printout of the moon from the internet. I've used an old birthday card and cut it up to put in here. This is from a magazine. Um, in the back here it's a bit hard to see but there's um, collage paper underneath that bunny and I've drawn over it this tissue paper here. So sometimes you can blend it in so much that you don't realise there's collage on it. Sometimes it's very in your face. This is actually from the Collage Collective book that I just showed you. This one's got some washi tape on it and some collaging over the top. So in lots of different ways you can get lots of different effects using collage. So some of the papers in the background. Oh, where are I? So here I've done a painting and um, painted over the collage as well to blend it in. So it's just a really, really handy tool to have and it's free you can collect it from anywhere you can make it yourself um, and you can do amazing things with it so that is a list of my top 10 things I know there's a lot more than 10 but um, they're the ones that I use most often they're the stuff that sits around me the most and I hope it's answered some of your questions about what I actually use in my art journal I would be loath to sort of say if I had to go to a desert island which one I would take. It would probably be the Dina Wakely stuff because I could take a whole heap of stuff just with that but um, all of it is useful in its own way. Please share with me what your favourite things are to art journal with. I'd love to hear what you love using. If you need to know where to get some of the stuff please contact me in the um, comments below and I will get back to you with that. Thank you so much for watching and until next time bye for now.